that first four years can be summed up by improvisation and disagreements. Pretty fundamental disagreements within the Eurozone about how far are we in this together. Is a member state that is no longer um, financially viable, can he turn to help to other European member states? Will we bail each other out or not? The first one was the government leaders took a very important decision, which was that they would create a banking union. There had been lots of debate about that for years, but now they said we really need it. We need to have common rules for the banks, common supervision and a common framework for bank resolution, how to deal with a bank that is no longer viable. The second thing that happened mid-2012 was, and this was only two weeks after, Mario Draghi was at a conference in London, it was an investor conference where the atmosphere was so negative about the future of the Euro that he decided to come out quite forcefully and said we will do whatever it takes and you can be assured it will be enough. Legacy issues that we still have, we need to get rid of. Uh, in a number of banks, the concentration of sovereign bonds of their own government is very high, which means that if the government gets into trouble, the bank will get into trouble. If the sovereign bonds lose their value, then the bank has a major problem uh, in its uh, balance sheet. Another structural issue regarding the banks is Europe is overbanked, and this is certainly also true for the Eurozone. Our economy depends for 80% on bank loans, which means that um, well, it has a, a number of effects. One is that if the economy is hit, if trust is, runs out, then all those risks immediately also go to the bank. And that's why the banking crisis in Europe had such, so much more impact than in the US. In the US it's almost the other way around. 25% of the American economy is financed by bank loans and 75% uh, is financed by capital markets, by equity, by investors. And that is a way to, um, a different way to absorb shocks, to distribute risks when they occur in a crisis. So there is an argument to say perhaps we should allow countries more fiscal space, flexibility, uh, autonomy again, but it would have to come back, um, it would have to go with if things go wrong, they must be able to default and still remain in the Eurozone. Now the only way to do that is if we have a proper mechanism, a, a, a design which is known and agreed in advance on how to deal with uh, unsustainable debt. This is called a sovereign debt restructuring mechanism. The other option is, of course, that we make the rules much more simple. Uh, basically ask the Commission to do their job, uh, not allow for all this flexibility, uh, and say you must take your responsibility, you're in the Eurozone, that's what you must do. Um, but at the current situation, the rules are unclear, there's lots of flexibility, the Commission is struggling to implement the rules um, and our credibility is at stake. <laughs>